coming up. We were buying kind of two sets of bulls, uh, looking for dollar ranch bulls for heifer production, and then we were buying terminal bulls. We've now found that we're better off to do the whole package thing. Now you have bulls that do both. We tackle the age-old challenge of selecting for carcass and maternal traits in beef cattle herds next on The American Rancher. Hello and welcome to The American Rancher. I'm Pam Minnick. Today, we're discussing one of the most challenging genetic selection debates in the beef cattle industry, terminal versus maternal traits. Is it possible to select for both without sacrificing one trait for the other? Joining us is globally recognized genetics expert, Lee Leachman, who will dive headfirst into that question. Hello, Lee, and welcome again to the show. Thank you, Pam. It's great to be back on American Rancher, and what an exciting, time we have in the cattle industry right now is cow calf producers we got to be looking forward to, to an improvement in prices this year cattle inventory is down substantially the leverage between the packer and the feeder is coming our way in fact if uh, we could just get a little rain out west I, I think it'd be a perfect storm and we'd be off to a great great year but the uh, outlook's very positive and so i think uh, probably all of you in the audience as well as uh, all the ranchers I'm speaking to are excited to think about the opportunities they have to go forward and, and really make their cow herd the best it can be and capitalize on these good times that are coming our way in the cattle industry. And uh, as I talk to ranchers, there's kind of a, a debate going on and a, a challenge. I think it's really kind of the core thing that, that ranchers tell me they're worried about or working on, and that is that there's so much information in these bull sale catalogs, they're struggling to figure out what to select for. I mean, you know, I think we know we, we want, you know, great cows and we want feeder calves that are worth a lot of money. But, uh, you know, there's a lot of different traits out there and a lot of EPDs. How do we balance those different traits? Do we go more for the maternal traits that are going to make that cow herd better? Or do we go more for the traits that make that feeder calf, you know, grow faster and get to a higher carcass weight and convert better and, uh, and have more carcass value at the end? And these trade-offs, this maternal terminal trade-off is not new. And the reality uh, is that we have uh, better tools than we've ever had to help make that trade-off. At Leachman's, we give you three indexes on every bull. You have the dollar ranch, you have the dollar feeder, and the dollar profit. But I think there's too many numbers in these catalogs, so to make it even easier, we have a star system. The good maternal bulls have four and five star maternal. The good feeder bulls have four and five star feeder. If a bull's good at both, we call them an all-around bull. All around, just like in the rodeo, they've got to win money in two events. So in this deal, if you're going to be an all-around bull, you got to be good at maternal and terminal. And then again, we assign four, four and a half, or five stars to those top bulls. And so regardless of what your criteria are, you may want maternal, you may want terminal, you may want both. We assign stars. Helps you figure that out. Next on the program, we're going to visit with some ranchers who are using those indexes and using DNA to sort not just the bulls they buy, but also the replacement heifers on their ranch for maternal and terminal traits. Welcome back to The American Rancher. Genetics expert and seed stock producer Lee Leachman is discussing the challenge of balancing terminal and maternal traits in beef cow herds. How can ranchers select for both without sacrificing one for the other? Here's Lee Leachman to answer that question. So joining me now are Diana Matheson from Walden, Colorado, and Todd and Travis Weinrich from Pierce, Nebraska. And uh, I'd like to start, Diana, with you and just have you tell us a little bit about your operation. Sure. Um, our ranch sits at 8,100 feet, the headquarters. Um, we are primarily a cow-calf operation, and we put up a lot of hay as well. Now, Diane, I know you guys went ahead and did the Zoetis test for Inherit Select on your heifers. Tell us a little bit about why you did that and what you found out. 
Well, I, I think, you know, this is probably one of the first times commercial cattlemen have had that data available and it's a tool. And I think as an industry where we're being asked to do more and more on less and less as far as the landscape, we got to really use every tool available. And I'm a data-driven person and genetics are huge. And with the genomic enhanced testing, you know, that just amplifies the accuracy. So I think I, this is the first year we did it and I'm still trying to get my mind wrapped around all this data. Uh, um, but I, I think it's the future. DNA is still not perfect. I tell people, I said, the DNA we know is not perfect. It's still a no. prediction of what's going to happen. So Yeah, and it's a, it's a tool. Um, it's a tool. And I, I mean, we can't ignore everything else and do important selection just based on DNA because there's phenotype, there's docility, there, there's all those variables. And uh, number one, the cow has to thrive and reproduce in the environment that you're ranching in. And so you have to always keep that first and foremost in your mind. Was there uh, any one thing that kind of you found particularly useful that was a surprise to you? If you were telling people that maybe hadn't used it yet, what, what would be the reason they should think about it? You can, it helps you make decisions to raise better replacement heifers that are more fertile that stay in your cow herd longer. At the same time, raising feed efficient feeders that that have really good carcass quality is, I mean, that the data is there, it's just ours to, to try and analyze and make better decisions with what that gives us. I think, Diana, a lot of people are, are trying to decide if they're gonna lean more terminal or maternal or trying to go balanced. How are you using the indexes and, and how are you balancing ranch versus feeder versus profit? You know, I, I think where we retain ownership on our feeders and we keep our heifers for replacement heifers, you, you just got to find the balance. And for me, I mean, we keep an eye on all of the indexes, dollar ranch, dollar feeder, but dollar profit probably combining both of them is, is probably the most important one that we put our most emphasis on. But, but then I, we also keep an eye on everything from milking to maternal weight to docility, um, all of those things factor in. And I, I think where we retain ownership and feed on the grid, you can really get caught up in chasing premiums on the grid and forfeit dollars every day in all of your cattle on feed efficiency. So I think that's, we're really, really trying to to take a hard look at that in our selection. Great answer and, and very, very nuanced answer too, because it is hard. I think a lot of people, you know, I think probably the biggest mistake people make buying is that they focus on one or the other, and then they forget what they gave up on what they didn't focus on. And so it's, it is kind of looking at all that stuff that makes a difference. Um, did you find many females, Diana, that you wanted to, to not keep because of some of that information like, udders or any of those other traits where you said, gosh, you know, if I wouldn't have had that, I'd have kept that heifer. But with that data, maybe she shouldn't be a heifer we keep. So obviously we haven't culled anything based on the results, but going forward, if we, especially if we test them as, you know, before we breed them, like say as weanling replacement heifers, um, in, in alongside with phenotype and just knowing the cattle, that that's going to be a huge management tool, having that information. Todd or Travis, will you tell us a little bit about your operation? We're uh, located at Pierce, Nebraska, which is uh, on uh, the east side of the Sand Hills in Nebraska, up in northeast Nebraska, where we run cow-calf operation, uh, retain our own cattle, and finish them ourselves and sell the finished product. So we just uh, tell us a little bit, you guys, uh, have been feeding cattle for quite a while and uh, you just had some cattle that I saw some data on look really super. Our uh, 2020 calf crop was 96 and a half percent choice plus uh, with a average carcass weight of 886 pounds and that's the entire calf crop that's not either we either retained ownership to breed or we slaughtered it. Tell us about what's going on on the cow side. We've talked a little bit about your carcass results, but what's going on on the maternal side 
as you guys have bred up more and more to stabilizer? Because you guys, you guys started in what year was stabilizer and kind of when did you go 100% stabilizer? We bought our first stabilizers in 2015. And in 2017, we were completely leachman sired. Uh, all stabilizers. All, all stabilizers. And from 2018 to 2021's calf crop, pounds weaned per cow exposed, we gained 60 pounds. So as you guys look down the road from where you are today, obviously, we, those are awesome numbers. Uh, but where do you think the next kind of uh, improvement's going to be? Do you see... Do you see anything particular going to go after, or, or how do you kind of see it going forward? I'm following you, Lee. <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate yeah, no, that. No, I, I would say that we continue to stride forward uh, on on consistency and and uh, uh, improved performance uh, with feed efficiency and your and carcass. Of course, you never can quit improving. Uh, once you quit trying, you're already behind. I think a lot of people are surprised that they can get that much marbling out of composite. I think people think they, they got to go black or they got to go Angus to get that much marbling, but uh, certainly you guys are, are proving that wrong with your feedlot results across the board. Uh, we've, we've watched our carcasses on the bulls that we buy uh, marbling and uh, we just keep getting better. When you guys are, are picking bulls, um, are, are you using dollar ranch and dollar feeder and dollar profit? And kind of how do you balance this whole question of maternal and terminal? We uh, mainly use dollar profit just because we keep everything. It either stays here and, and gets bred or it's, it's slaughtered, you know, it goes straight from here. So that whole number kind of start to finish really is what you're looking for. Kind of summarize when we started buying uh, bulls off the dollar profit, we, we were buying kind of two sets of bulls, uh, looking for dollar ranch bulls, uh, obviously for for heifer production, and then we were buying terminal bulls, leaning away from the ranch, and uh, we've now found that we're better off to do the whole package thing. Now you have bulls that do both and uh, uh, probably have uh, more value in the long run. I know you guys uh, this year inherit tested your heifers. Tell us about that process and, and kind of how that worked and, and what you found out. The collection of it was, was really easy and Zayotis and your crew made it, made it simple. Uh, if you can study a spreadsheet, it's it's basically self-explanatory. But the data came back exactly as your system said it should. Our triple stack, double stack generation leachman tested significantly higher on the profit scale than uh, one of the original cows that we purchased. One of the things that we kind of think is going to happen down the road, um, and I think it's interesting, is that we think that, you know, going back to your point, Todd, that it's hard to look at these cattle and tell which ones are going to do well in the grid. We actually think those animals with the high feeder calf score, they, they are going to do well on the grid. And so I think it is, it, it is going to be a tool down the road that could actually allow a producer to, to do a set of cattle and, and kind of drive that value. I know Zoetis is trying to bring that test to a feedlot situation where it would cost under 10 bucks a head. Then it might be kind of interesting to do feeder cattle and decide whether their cattle are going to sell on the, on the rail or cattle are going to sell live weight. Yeah, that would have a significant value, no doubt about it. Uh, I'm uh, not sure the Packer would like us to do that, but... Uh... <laughs> I don't know if his concern is. They might figure hard. that out before long. Good. <laughs> yeah. What kind of it? Does did the DNA help you eliminate some heifers that maybe for just aside from profit were not heifers you wanted to keep? There was a significant range in our birth weight EPD that I wouldn't quite have understood. You know, which we eliminated some there and and some other problems, a little bit of fertility trouble is always 
a step that you can avoid. Uh, we tried to make a shortcoming of a long coming. Well, I want to thank you guys, um, Diana and Todd and Travis. You guys uh, are, are great customers and we appreciate your business. And I also appreciate you coming on and, and just sharing a little bit about your philosophies and strategies. I, I picked you guys because you guys have, have do a great job at, at sorting through all that information and, and have a real plan. And so um, we, we wanted to share that with other ranchers because I think there's just some great tips that they can take home and apply to their own operations. So thank you for joining us. After the break. Here's a bull that's an all round bull, right? He's, he's four and five stars on both maternal and dollar feeder. Lee compares bulls that excel in carcass, maternal, and a combination of both. You're watching The American Rancher. Stay with us. Welcome back to The American Rancher. In the last segment, Lee talked with three ranchers about their experiences in selecting for terminal versus maternal traits in their herd. In this segment, Lee brings it all together by comparing numbers on bulls a rancher might use to raise feeder calves, replacement heifers, or both. Well, I don't know about all of you, but I, I sure enjoyed that segment and took a lot of real strategies home on, on how to look at bull selection. I wanna just take a moment and show you the kind of information that we have on a typical bull that's selling in our catalog. I picked two bulls out and we're gonna look at lots 466 and 467 out of our March 28th sale. So these bulls are selling, we sell in catalog order. So these bulls are way down the line. There's 562 bulls in the catalog. 500 bulls will probably actually be at the sale. And so these bulls are, let's say 80, 85% down the line, okay? They're, they're just below average on their figures for our sale. But the first thing to note is that the, the, the average sale bull in this sale is $22,000 profit, which ranks in the top 2% of the overall industry. These bulls are at 20,000, still you know, a little bit lower than average within the sale but way above average in the industry. This, this graph kind of shows you where industry average is and where our sale bulls range. They range from the 6% to the top, you know, top, top bulls. And obviously there are other bulls that rank that high as well. Every bull in the industry has dollar profit. Um, some of them are below average in industry. Some of them are above average and some sales are really, really high. Um, you'll find that in some of those sales, the bulls are decidedly more terminal and other sales are decidedly more maternal. We of course have both among these 560 bulls. And then we've got those bulls, those all around bulls that do everything. So I'm gonna show you two bulls here um, that, are, that are really bulls that are, are good at either maternal or terminal. So if we look at these two bulls and we look at lot 466 and lot 467, the first thing you notice is that uh, on lot 466, He's a very strong maternal bull. He's a maternal specialist. See how his ranch ranks in the top 4% at 62. And on the stars, he's a four-star maternal bull. He's good on dollar ranch. He's good on teat and utter, and he's good on fertility. In contrast, we go over to lot 467. His ranch is only $4. So he's like in the 88th percentile. And if you look, their dollar profit is the same. They're both 20,000 on dollar profit. But the lot 467 bull is low on dollar ranch and high on dollar feeder. He's a terminal specialist. He's great at making good feeder calves, but I wouldn't recommend you keep daughters out of him. Even though his utter score and fertility is good, those cows are going to be really big and they're not going to be as, as long lived and as productive. You're going to get fewer pounds per acre out of those cows than you will out of the lot 466 bull. So a real simple example. Now let me put up a bull. I'm gonna put up our lot one bull because he does everything right. Here's a bull that's an all round bull, right? He's, he's four and five stars on both maternal and dollar feeder. He checks all the boxes, his dollar profits through the roof. And so we've got all these kind of bulls that are gonna sell. I think a common misconception is that our bulls are too expensive. If you compare our bulls, to the average Angus bull that sold the industry last year, we're cheaper. And here's the price distribution. You can see that we sell a lot of bulls in every price category. 
from three to $5,000. We sell a lot of bulls. And then these bulls like lot one that just hit it off the charts. Yeah, that bull's gonna go ahead and sell for more. Obviously, we'd like to invite you to come join us during our sale March 26th, 27th, and 28th. 26th is just a come study the cattle and visit with us. We can help you pick out the right animals. You can study things at leisure. Um, if, you, if you want, you can go home and then bid over Superior. We have people that do that. On uh, Sunday the 27th, we're going to be offering 225 high-dollar profit, high maternal replacement heifers and fall-bred cows. On Monday, the 28th, starting at 10 a.m., we'll be selling the bulls. We are offering our sight unseen guarantee. Not only do we guarantee you're going to like the bull, but if you give us a $3,000 to $5,500 order before the spring sale, even if we can't fill that order in the spring sale, we'll find a bull out of our private treaty offering that is in the top 6% of the industry on dollar profit. Fits your specs, maternal and terminal are all round and we'll deliver them to you sight unseen guaranteed, whether that's one or a truckload. We try our best, and of course, every one of these bulls sells with our breeding season guarantee. Go online to leachman.com or call us and order a catalog. So we're trying to make bull buying easy. We hope you can join us. If you can't, participate remotely through Superior, through Sight Unseen, or call one of our reps who will help you narrow down this huge offering into a small list of animals that fit your criteria. That's all the time we have today. We hope you enjoyed the information in this show. For more information about us, visit our website, theamericanrancher.com, or connect with us on Facebook. I'm Pam Minnick. For our entire American Rancher team, thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.